Here in the Sunset District of the city's west side, there are thousands of houses built in the 1940s where the house rests on top of the garage. Experts say that makes them especially vulnerable to quakes. Recently, Dateline showed up at the home of Sunset Area resident Richard Fritch, who lives in that very type of house. We showed up out of the blue with no advance word, just the way an earthquake would. And a great quake, magnitude 8.0 or higher, is never far from his mind. I think about the big one coming because you always hear that the big one's coming, the big one's coming. Like many San Franciscans, Richard, his wife Kelly, and stepdaughter Alexis are a bit unnerved at the chance of a devastating earthquake in their city. Oh, I am scared, of course. Like, I always think, like, oh, my God, well, if one comes, like, that's going to be horrible. We'll see how bad it could be. We offered the Fritches a unique opportunity to literally rock their world. Our plan? To show the Fritches what might happen to a house similar to theirs in the event of a catastrophic earthquake. Are their furnishings secure? Are there precautions they might take? Do they know what to do when the big one hits? Working with the University of California Berkeley's Earthquake Engineering Research Center, Dateline sponsored the building of a house structurally just like the Fritches, only smaller. The furnishings in these two rooms approximate what the Fritches have in their home. So this is a very real test. The objective here is to recreate real conditions. UC Berkeley lab manager Don Clyde has run the apparatus called the shaking table for more than 20 years. The ground motion that's going to be used for this test will simulate the actual soil conditions that, that uh, exist uh, in the Sunset and Richmond districts. So the Fritches will get to see how their house holds up if the big one hits. Look at that. Look at everything. Oh. Coming up, we know what happened 100 years ago in the great quake of 1906. Thousands dead, hundreds of thousands homeless. It was as if the streets themselves had turned into great waves, great tsunamis of cement. What could happen next time? This man needs no demonstration from us. His name is Herbert Hamrall. He still works three days a week at Andronico's Market in San Francisco, and God love him, he is 103 years old. Mr. Hamrall was just three back in 1906. It is when the earth moved and history changed course. In the early morning hours of April 18, 1906, San Francisco was the biggest, richest, and possibly the most wide open city in the western United States. Suddenly, at 12 minutes past five, everything changed. It was as if the streets themselves had turned into great waves, great tsunamis of cement. And they were rising up and down, and the buildings on top of them were rocking to and fro and to and fro, and pieces started falling off them. All hell broke loose. It's estimated the quake was a magnitude 8.0. Within minutes, buildings collapsed all over town. More than 3,000 people died, and even more damage was yet to come. For Mr. Hamrall, one image remains burned in his mind. All I remember about the earthquake is my mother carrying me down the stairs. The Hamrall family escaped, but soon at least 50 separate fires were raging all over town, set off by broken gas lines and upended stoves. But you don't have to be over 100 years old to remember a bad quake in San Francisco. In 1989, a magnitude 7.1 quake hit near San Francisco during the World Series. So the Oakland A's take, 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 take a while, we have an 